one ends. What we want to do to begin with is to make something very, very, very clear. There are a number of different opinions regarding how we determine the beginning of Ramadan. But what we want to do is to take one of those opinions out and completely put it to the side. Because it is one of the opinions that we can openly say is falsehood. And this opinion that we can openly say is falsehood is the opinion of calculating the beginning of Ramadan using scientific instruments or charts or knowledge of the stars or any other method. This is absolute batil. And alhamdulillah, there are some types of disagreement that we can say are genuine and we can have respect for the people who hold them. And there are some kinds that are absolute falsehood. And we warn against them and we warn against the people who spread them amongst the ummah. And from the worst of these, or from amongst the worst of these that relate to Ramadan, is the opinion that Ramadan should be calculated scientifically or through the stars and the charts and so on and so forth. And I'm going to explain to you why this is such a problem. And the, for example, typifying this is the website moonsighting.com where they ridicule those people who spot the moon by their eyes and they claim that your fasting is not correct and they make you doubt the beginning of Ramadan and the end of Ramadan. These shayateen who spread this message into the ummah, they only seek to make you doubt in your deen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete his religion even if the disbelievers hate it. So subhanallah, there is a real, you know, a real movement at the moment to ridicule those people who follow the sunnah with the regard to the beginning and the end of Ramadan. And to make them say that their methods are no more than the methods of ignorant Bedouins and fools who don't know any difference and have no knowledge. And this is what they would make you think about the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Rather, this is what they would make you think about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatih. And this hadith is narrated by Sahih, in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Fast when you see it and break your fast when you see it, i.e. when you see the moon. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, we are an ummah that does not calculate, or the wording to that effect. We are an ummah that does not calculate. We are an ummah that is illiterate. We do not calculate. We are an ummah who every single Muslim in this ummah is able to determine the beginning of the Ramadan and the end of Ramadan. But these people would restrict the beginning and the end of Ramadan to a handful of individuals who have the right technology or the right degree or the right PhD to be able to tell you. Alhamdulillah, our religion is not like this. Our religion is open to everybody and Ramadan is not stopped from being understood by anybody. So Alhamdulillah, anyone is able to determine the beginning and the end of Ramadan by their sight and by learning the shapes of the moon and when the new moon begins. One of the clearest evidences that this opinion is absolute falsehood is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim as well. And it's very, very important that you understand this. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you are prevented from seeing it, i.e. by the clouds, then uh, estimate the length of the month as 30 days. Okay, 30 days. Why is this so clear that it refutes the idea of calculating? Because, let us imagine for a second, that we, that it's cloudy one day and we can't see the moon. If it's cloudy and we can't see the moon, then the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to fast 30 days. We know for a fact that the clouds don't stop the moon from coming. Right? The clouds don't stop the moon from coming. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying to you, the new moon is there, but the clouds are stopping you from seeing it. Fa prevent or delay your fast by a day or extend your Ramadan by a day. So he's clearly saying that regardless of whether the moon is there or not there, if you can see it or if you can't, you can, then you 
fa- you begin your fasting or you finish your fasting at the end of the month and if you can't see it even though it's there then you continue your fasting and this is because this issue is what we call ta'abbudi let me give you a simple example when you make wudu you wash your hands and your mouth and your nose and your face and your arms you wipe over your head and your ears and you wash your feet let's imagine someone has just done that and their water is dripping from their feet as we speak it's still dripping from his beard it's still dripping water and then he breaks wind tell me why does he wash his hands again and his mouth and his nose and his face and his arms and wipe over his head and wash his feet when the place where he broke wind from he doesn't wash and why does he wash his hands when his hands are dripping wet with water because this issue of wudu is ta'abbudi Allah is testing your obedience to him he is not scientifically testing whether or not you have broken wudu in this way or that he is testing your obedience to him he is not it is not a matter of science because science you cannot explain to me how a person can break wind and then wash his hands again it doesn't make any sense it's ta'abbudi it's there to test your obedience to Allah azza wa jalla Likewise the sight of the moon is something which is ta'abbudi it's there to test your obedience to Allah it doesn't matter scientifically whether it's there or it's not there it's there to test your obedience to Allah azza wa jalla to test whether you're going to obey the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam or disobey the messenger there are certain things in Islam that are related to physical scientific uh, actions but a lot of the actions in islam are there not for their scientific merit but they are there to test your obedience to allah from your disobedience so in this way we don't really care whether the moon scientifically is there or not we care only about what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to do if you see it then fast and if you don't see it then continue the month 30 days Once we've thrown that as opinion aside we now come to three opinions which are genuine and bona fide opinions regarding the sighting of the moon and how we determine whether the month of Ramadan has begun or not The first of those is that every Muslim community is responsible for their own moon sighting Every Muslim community is responsible for their own moon sighting. The evidence that they use for this is the hadith that we mentioned when you see it fast and so they said that this refers to the local community of Muslims or to the uh, commanding person who is ruling the Muslims in that particular area. So if the moon according to this opinion is seen in Indonesia but it is not seen in England then according to this opinion the people in England do not fast and the people in Indonesia fast because they have seen it as the prophet sai sam commanded and we have not seen it so we do not fast that is one opinion the second opinion is the opposite the second opinion says that wherever the moon is reliably sighted in the muslim world and i say reliably so not those countries that decide the moon sighting politically or those countries that decide the moon sighting because we have to be different from the wahhabis in saudi arabia or those muslims who decide the moon sighting on anything else but those who decide it reliably they have a reliable system for watching the moon then wherever in the world it is seen they begin and the evidence they use for this is they say that the prophet sai sallam as the commander of all of the muslims he would determine the beginning of ramadan based on the testimony of course he could only get testimony from the local area because they didn't have mobile phones and you know the internet and so on and so forth so they couldn't communicate over long distances and they say that it's important for the muslims to be united for ramadan to begin on a single day and the third opinion is to say that the uh, moon sighting is to be we are to take one country and to use that country as a template or as a center by which all the other muslims can follow and usually it's suggested that that country be saudi arabia now one thing i'm going to say to you about these three different opinions is that none of them are free from criticism all of them have problems with them in this world today all of them have problems with them in this world today If we take the issue of Saudi Arabia, what do you do if you can see the moon as plain as I can see you and you can see me here today and Saudi Arabia is not fasting? 
So that has a problem with it. Likewise, all of the Muslims in the world getting together, the issue is, does this contradict the hadith fast when you see it and withhold when you see it? And the second issue is, how do we reliably determine when the moon is seen there or when the moon is seen here when so many people do not sight the moon properly? The third issue also has a problem because you have the problem of defining where is a community. For example, if I am sitting in Medina and I can see the moon and someone in Riyadh can't see the moon, should they fast or not fast? This opinion also has issues with it. So all three of them have issues of criticism. What I'm going to advise you guys to do is I'm going to say to you that it really doesn't matter which of the three opinion, opinions are followed. All of them have an evidence and all of them have equal options for criticism with them. But what you must do, or what my advice to you to do, is for you to follow whatever system your local masjid has adapted. So that your local masjid, you can all fast together on the same day and you can all break your fast together on the same day. So if your local masjid follows Saudi Arabia, that's no problem with that. They have their fatawa, they have some of the scholars who support this, and this is their decision. If they follow local sighting only, meaning wherever it's seen in Birmingham, they follow that, no problem. If they follow wherever it's seen in England, no problem. If they follow wherever it's seen in the Muslim world, no problem. At the end of the day, all of these opinions have issues and, and criticisms that can be made, and none of them seem to suit our circumstances in the Ummah with us all being broken up without a single leader and a single uh, system of command. We all have, there are issues with all of them, and all of them have their evidences. So what I would say to you is, in order to keep the Muslims together, in order to make yourselves uh, if you like, uh, not blameworthy in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, whatever your local masjid does that is genuine, as long as your local masjid is genuine. Alhamdulillah, this masjid we believe and we're certain that inshallah they are genuine when it comes to the sighting of the moon. If you attend a masjid who you know for a fact, they meet two months before Ramadan and say, right, when would it be good for the shops to be open for Eid? Shops should be open on a Saturday. Okay, Ramadan is on a Friday. If you know your masjid does this, you can't follow them. Because you know for certain that their method is absolutely not permissible. But if they use one of the three genuine methods, either they say wherever it's cited in Britain, or they say wherever it's cited in the Muslim world reliably, or they go by a single place or a single country, and they make that the place where if it's cited they fast, and if it's not they don't, then inshallah they have their opinion and they have their evidence and they have their Dalil. So we would say that in order to keep the community together, let the people follow the reliable method that is used by the local masjid. And this inshallah ta'ala will bring the community ta'ala together and help the people so we don't have a situation where a son is fasting and a father is breaking his fast and so on and so forth. However, there is one